Hi there. So as you know, um, one of the projects I want to uh, do this season is, is uh, reef my mirror dinghy sails. Now this is going to be the biggest project I've embarked on by far. There's a lot of complications, there's a lot of ways to do things. Some of it I'm going to take advice on, some of it's going to be trial and error with me and that's the way we'll do it. Um, but I thought what I, I'd like to do is take you through the whole process, um, uh, 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 you know, from zero, absolutely the thought process, all the way to hopefully completion. And I'm going to start today with a brief little whiteboard session about where my head's at, getting that down on paper, uh, maybe uh, downloading for you guys uh, all the information I've been, <coughs> excuse me, collating. Uh, about reefing. There's not an awful lot of help out there, but there is help out there. Um, so the first thing I wanted to start with was really the considering how many reefs we were going to do in the sale. So I've spoke to quite a few people about this um, and the consensus seems to be uh, just to put one reef in the sale. There are a couple of other people that have said put two in um, and I'm starting to see <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm starting to see that there are people that say put one reef in and they're the ones that are like saying, well, if it's a windy day, you still want to sail your mirror, then put one reef in and off you go. But I think the cruisers, there's a couple of guys um, that are real ardent mirror dinghy cruisers and they've got two reefs in their sails um, to make the main sail quite a handkerchief one. So... I'm going to think about that. I was erring towards two or three, but I think three is a no-no. I think that's too much. It's too much work. There'll be too many lines, too much complexity for a dinghy. Um, one, maybe. Two, maybe. I don't know. Now, what I was thinking was this. If I've got one reef in my sail, then I've got a jib, and the full sail. Uh, these are the um, combinations I can have at 100%. Then I've got a jib and I've got a main sail at 20, uh, at say 60% for argument's sake. I've got a jib on its own and I've got a sail at 100% and a sail at 60% on its own. So instantly one reef gives me one, two, three, four, five options um, to my sail plan, which is pretty good. I do apologize for the, 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 that doesn't really want to wipe the board very well. If I have two reefs in the main, then I'm gonna have another option. I'm gonna have, let's just say we do a 25% on its own, 25% with the jib, with the, with the jib, and <clears throat> that adds another two options, which is seven. If we then add uh, a reef in the jib at 50%, then you can almost, well, I think it works out at 10 different sort of sail plans. So from that, I think really, we're not gonna need any more than two reefs in the main sail and possibly one in the jib. Um, in fact, we'll come on to number three now. We'll come back to number two. The jib reefing considerations. Again, do I want to reef the jib? What are the complexities in reefing the jib? Is it feasible? Can I reef the jib, you know, on the move? Um, do you really need to reef your jib, you know? Um, I have two jibs. One I'm planning on reefing, my old set of sails, but do I want to, instead of reef, do I want to create a, a storm jib instead? I could just cut that sail up into about 50% 50, 50 sail area and just create a, like a mini storm jib. Um, will I be able to put that on the boat? Uh, you know, at the time, you know, if I'm in, you know, in the seas with, that necessitate uh, me being able to do that um, whilst the, the boat is bobbing about uh, in the sea, uh, is that feasible? Is it possible? Is it just dangerous? You know, so we have all these considerations we've got to we've got to do. So 
we've got to think about. So how many reefs do I want? Which sails do I want them in? You know, these are all the things we're gonna sort of discover as, as time goes on. The next thing is mainsail head and head height. So the head of the mainsail, for those of you that might not know, I get my terminology mixed up all the time. You've got the head here. That's the top of the sail. Now on a normal yacht, you would have a Bermuda rig and you'd have basically a, a line that would come down here on a pulley and that would pull the mainsail up and down. When you reef and you take your first reef, say here, you need to pull, let that sail down a little bit. So the sail will end up here like this. And the problem I've got with that system is that the mirror dinghy doesn't, is not a Bermuda rig, it's actually a, a Gunter rig that has a gaff. So I've either got to have a system which will allow me to do the same thing and allow me to bring the sail head up and down. So for full, full sail plan, it would be here, the head of the sail. Reef number one, it may be here. Reef number two, it may be right down here, like this or like that, or like that. Um, or do I have a system, and I can draw that over here, I think I've just got enough room on the, uh, on the board, or do I have a system which lowers the gunter, the, the gaff? So for full sail height, the gaff comes up to this point here, and that's where the buckle or the, the bracket on the, gun, on the gaff is. If you want to then have a, a, the sail lower, then what Gunter rigs tend to do is have a second buckle higher up the gaff. So there's the buckle A and there's A and buckle B would be here. And that actually would have the effect of lowering the gaff down um, for your reef. But if I've got two reefs, I would need a third buckle so let's do that again and try and try and do this like that. So actually we'd have a lower height again and this would be C with B and A there. So those are the, those are the options for bringing the sail down. Now this, this is the best option in terms of on paper. It's the simplest to do, simplest to work out. <clears throat> Can we do something with the gaff? that would allow that, will the pressure on the gaff work? You know, having that extra bit of pressure at the top there, I don't know, I'm not sure. This is what a lot of sailors I've spoke to that have gunter rigs, so a lot of Draskin boats have gunter rigs, and they've told me this is what they do. But again, these sailors are not uh, cruisers, they're more lake sailors, that you know, just wanna put a reef in the sail if they wanna go out in breezier weather. Is this easier to operate at sea than this? You know, this would necessitate bringing the gaff all the way down, somehow changing the buckle position with your halyard, <coughs> excuse me, and then raising it back up, sorting it all out. You know, will the sail billow out? Will, what will happen if, you know, if you're trying to pull that down? Is that feasible on the mirror? You know, so both systems have their pros and cons. Um, what I'm worried about is the force that will come down here from this rope or this line. You know, could, it may even split, could split the, the gaff in half. I don't know, I really don't know. Um, is there a way of reinforcing? Could we could put a pulley on the top of the gaff? The thing about the gaff is that end of it is very thin and it's not very chunky. You know, would we need to reinforce the gaff? So, you know, there's a lot of things to consider here. So that's the other thing, the main cell head height. Um, the other things to consider are, I've wrote down here, equipment needed. Well, will I need new brackets? Will I need new uh, halyards? If I wanna go for the head sail uh, system, then I'm gonna need to buy a halyard that can do that. Um, I'll need cleats for various systems. Do I go for a dual 
uh, I think they call it a topping lift actually, that for a halyard or the gaff halyard. Do I go for dual topping lifts? I mean, I don't really know how that would work. Um, you know, there's all these considerations, how much equipment you would need for each one. Um, and then what I've not written on here, number five, is then looking at the sails themselves. So what I'm gonna do when we go down to the lake, I'm gonna get the sails <clears throat> on the floor because I need an area big enough to do it. And then I think what we'll do probably by trial and error because the sail isn't actually a triangle, it kind of, it kind of bends a little bit like that. So it's quite hard, it makes it quite hard to work out the area. But what we'll do is we'll do a rough area uh, uh, measurement and then what we'll do, we'll by trial and error work out where these little uh, reef points need to go and then we'll know where the eyelets will need to be sewn in and also probably two and maybe three reefing points there to tie the sail up when it's not in use. Um, other considerations is, is, you know, is if I do intend on camping in the tent, uh, uh, camping in the boat, sorry, not the tent, the boat, um, you know, will one of these systems uh, favour another when, when you actually need a sort of tent to be draped over the, the boom or the gaff. So that's another thing we've got to take into consideration. The last thing that I've been thinking of is jack lines. Oh, are they called jack lines? They're basically the lines here that kind of look like this and they allow your sail to sort of fold into the boom without billowing out and getting out of control. So, you know, if I'm bringing the boom up and down or the gaff up and down to reef my sails, are the, you know, will jack lines work with that? Are they gonna get all tangled up? I don't really know. Um, this way, they'll definitely work because they're designed to be used with that kind of more Bermuda style rig, you know? Um, either way, we're gonna try uh, either way, we're gonna um, we're gonna give it a go. We're gonna do our best. I think it's gonna be a bit of uh, advice, a bit of uh, Dave belts and braces, and a little bit of uh, ingenuity on our part, and we'll see uh, where we go with it.